Hey everyone, in this video I'd just like to update you on a few projects I have going on right now. Um, the kind of progress in my little micro shop here and uh, some things that are to come in the future, so stay tuned. One of the best upgrades I did that I should have done a long time ago was put lights on all my machines. I've always had some light on them, but just never enough. Uh, so I went to Ikea and I picked up a couple of these task lamps, I think they were like 12 or 15 bucks each. And I mounted two of them on my milling machine here so I can kind of adjust them to wherever I need light so there's no shadows. And I did the same to the lathe. Uh, I mounted them right to the bench and they're kind of spring-loaded, your standard little task lamp. And I can move them wherever I want and I never have my hands casting shadows. And when you're working with small parts, it's so nice to have ample lighting. And I also kind of changed around some things I have on the bench here. So I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, another thing I did, which is really helping my organization, uh, I'm usually a fairly organized guy, but sometimes making things simpler makes things faster, um, is this board up here that I've been working on. So I'll kind of give you a quick rundown of that. So what this is, is basically a big piece of steel. It's two foot by three foot piece of steel screwed to the wall. And on one side over here, I've put some dry erase calendars for a week, uh, two weeks. That's how I usually work is in two weeks bands. Uh, erase everything because I'm done my week right now. Uh, but normally I have my order flow going there so I can see what I have to build, when I have to ship out and whatnot. Um, and then below it, I have all the plans for the parts that I'm currently making. Uh, three of them are covered up because they're kind of specific drawings I've worked a lot on and I, I don't want to just post the dimensions online. Uh, the cap, if anyone wants to replicate my cap, there's all the measurements. So um, normally I don't really build off a blueprint plan because I built so many of these pens I can kind of build them by memory now, but it's always nice to have something where I can, if I'm unsure, I can double check it. Um, or if I want to change something, I have something to write on the plans right there. It's just it's very useful to have. I don't know why I haven't done this in the past. I have, but I've always had them in books and my desk and stuff. Anyways, having them where you don't have to ever touch them, they don't get full of grease and oil and stuff, it's way better. Way, way, way better. And they're just magneted on there, so when I change them, you know, if I update them enough, then I just take them off and reprint them and good to go. One more thing I should say about this. Initially, I actually bought this piece of steel to use as a Pearson boards, I guess that's what people people are calling them. Uh, NYCNC, if you haven't watched that channel, go check it out. Uh, specifically, there's a video uh, touring Jay Pearson's shop. Um, actually, I'll throw a card up there because it's a really cool video. Um, anyways, they went through, he built this really cool kind of order flow system. I printed one, I, I kind of replicated it for my purposes. I used it for about maybe two, three weeks. And it just, it didn't fit for the way I build things yet. In the future it might, but um, I found this method right now with just my dates laid out, my orders tracked online, and then my blueprints here. I find that better for me right now. Um, going forward, maybe it'll change, but that's how that initially planned out and now it's it's changed slightly. So this is how it is. Um, you can see my workbench, nothing too new here. Loving this 5C. Uh, awesome, awesome, well worth it, worth every penny for it. I replaced the wood block for my tools there, put a mounted HDPE block, gets everything up off the counter so I can sweep it off easy, uh, vacuum up a mess. I keep my vacuum actually just right below my little lathe here so I always have it so I can clean off the, the desk. Compressed air is great but it just goes everywhere and since this is a workshop inside I, I don't want to be blowing chips everywhere. Uh, having all your tools like that laid out close at hand plus having the drawer below it, awesome. Uh, the best way to work. I don't I don't know how I did without this for so long. Uh, you can see I've added some collets and stuff here. Uh, the one cool thing I did is I have picked up this 1C collet or 1C, one inch 5C call it. Um, and then this was the stock tag spindle that I took out and then I shrink fit a piece of steel on here and then machined it true. And this just slips into the 5C, Ugh, why do I keep saying that? Uh, slips into the 1C call or one inch 5C call it. Uh, and then this just goes in the headstock and that lets me clamp the stock spindle so I can uh, thread on the old three jaw and the four jaw. I don't use it often. But sometimes if I don't have the right size call it for the work I'm working on, it's nice to be able to chuck something up and, and work on it. So uh, nothing else too noon here, a couple spots for drill bits and whatnot, but it's a process that keeps going. That is most of that. Oh, over here. Just to the left of my lathe here, I have this shelf. Uh, it normally was full of camera gear and some other knickknacks. I cleaned it all out and I dedicated it just to R8 collets, a drill, and then the uh, wrenches to change out the R8 collets. Seems like a super simple thing, but having all that quick access without having to open a drawer is just, when you do it like over and over and over and over, even saving a few seconds, it, it's amazing how much time you save in general. So anyways, that was a super good addition. I'm loving that a lot. Um, one thing I've actually been doing with this box that, well, I haven't been doing, but 
I'll explain. So I have a bunch of these bins. I absolutely love them. They work super good for organizing parts. This one specifically I made just for pen parts. So when I'm making pens, you can see in here, I've color coded these bins. Uh, the back one or the orange ones are Mark IIs, blue ones are Mark Ones. I can make all the parts. I can stock them all in here. As you can see, there is none stocked in here because I've been trying to do one piece flow for all the pens for the last couple months. And that's actually worked surprisingly well. There's some parts I've been cheating on just because the process is quite involved. So I'd make maybe like half a dozen of them or something like that. It's been working well. The perfect thing that it's done for me is showed me where I can make parts in bulk and where I should just one piece flow them. So uh, this is going to change in the future. I'm going to add some parts that I make in large batches, like engraving end caps and stuff like that. Things that will be good for every pen. Some parts I like to fit to the exact pen it's going to go out with. It doesn't really matter now. I found I've had enough consistency in making pens that I can, I can batch build them, but it's batch building is still not a fun thing to do. And if, if you make an upgrade, uh, then, then you're screwed because then all your old parts aren't, aren't upgraded. So anyways, I'm um, going to change slightly, but maybe I'll actually make use of this. It's just been uh, collecting dust for the last few months, but it looks pretty. If you've been to my site in the last few months, uh, you've probably noticed that I've added the Parker style refill option to the Mark IIs. It technically, technically the space pen and the Parker are the same body style. The only thing is the space pen is shorter, so you have to use a plastic bit. And anyways, that's why I have a Parker and space pen still, because I, I don't like to use the plastic bit that comes on the end of the space pen. It just kind of feels junky to me. So that's why there's two two options right now. Parker, I think 0.7 gel filled, Quink gel, kind of a weird name. But anyways, uh, really nice writing ref refill. My favorite used to be the space pen because it was all metal and it had a nice, a nice feel to the pen. This has the exact same feel, but it has a better writing. Uh, if I want to compare it to anything, it writes like a Pilot G2, which is probably my favorite writing refill now. This is going in my pen next. Once my uh, current ink runs out, I think I have a G2 in there right now. I'll be putting a, uh, a Parker style, or this specific refill actually. I'm a huge fan of it. It's cost effective too, and uh, that's why it's a new option in my pen. Uh, enough people requested it that I decided just to roll it into an option, so I designed a little bolt that would work well with it, and that's that. So if you purchase a Parker style refill, this is the one it ships with. There is like a bazillion um, Parker style bodies. So you have a all kinds of different refill selection if you want something thinner or something that writes, you know, in a different uh, uh, like a gel or an ink or whatever. I don't know. Lots of stuff. So anyways, if you're interested in tinkering, Parker is probably a good way to go. Uh, or Space Pen and G2. They're always solid. So last, best for last, this pen. This is my everyday carry pen. This started life off as a nice shiny piece of, well, this isn't shiny, this is a piece of raw stock, but it started life off as a shiny piece of brass and was turned into a pen. Um, I always wanted to do this oxidization. I, I call this the shipwreck model because <laughs> I wanted it to look like it spent its life at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, so I looked in how to tarnish um, brass to give you those kind of those really cool blues and greens. Um, turns out you can do it with some chemicals and some patience. So this one, Took me quite a while to do. <laughs> uh, I think this one was about 24 hours to oxidize it all crazy like and then I had to kind of clean it and then wax it to keep the the finish on there but I've been carrying it now for a month and the finish shows no shine no sign of deterioration so uh, I'm super happy with it and if anything it's getting grungier because you know my hand oils on it and stuff so if you're into that grunge kind of look this will be a wicked finishing option for you and everyone will be obviously different because it's just just the way oxidization works. You always get some cool rad random pattern. Um, so anyways, it's probably gonna be a finishing option I release in the future. The only downside is it slightly changes the feel of the bolt action because I also oxidize the bolt, not the bolt itself, not the bolt pin, but the bolt inside there. Um, so it doesn't shine nice and shiny through it, but that creates a surface finish that's different than the inside of the pen. So it doesn't slide like that ultra smooth machine sliding action. So. Um, obviously it still works beautifully. I, I carry it every day, but, uh, it just, it changes the feel of the pen. But if you're into that kind of grungy look, uh, this might be for you. I know I super like it, super like it. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of it. So that's why I did it for my own pen. And, uh, like I said, I've been carrying it for a few months now and it is awesome. So if that's something you're interested in, hit me up with a message and, uh, we can talk, but in the future, in the future, I will release this as a finishing option if people like it. I don't know. I think it's cool. Anyways, that's it for now. That's, uh, that's, I got more topics to go over here, but we'll save them for another video to kind of keep things, uh, in sync. 
Thank you to everyone who has purchased my pens in the past or who's thinking about buying one now. The support from you guys has been unbelievable. I'm, it's, it's a product I'm super happy with and I love to get it out to other people and see the reactions and uh, see that they're enjoying it. When people get back to me, it's, it's always awesome. So if you have one of my pens and you want to shoot me an email, I'm always happy to hear from you, good or bad. Um, like I said, it just, it's been amazing and I'm super happy. I love doing this and uh, you people are the reason that I am doing this and that I get to continue to do this. So thank you so much and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.